What's up guys, how's it going? Philip Starr here, and I'm back for another wee video. So today what I'm going to talk about is gRPC deadlines and the benefits of them and why these are like an alternative to the traditional service timeout you would have. So I've got my whiteboard here, let me actually draw it for you guys. So let me actually show you an example. And if you've never heard of a deadline, that's fantastic because Hopefully I can show you a bit more about what it actually is. So let's pretend we have a really friendly user here. So our instead of friendly, is a happy user because the system works. And what we have here is the K8 cluster. So of course we use Kubernetes. So K8 cluster and the user sends a request in. And in our cluster, what we have is GraphQL. So we first have the GraphQL service, and he uses, say, Apollo for a client. And this is actually what I recommend. So GraphQL, Apollo client, GraphQL server, and that's our ingress. Now, actually in the cluster, you can have a couple of different microservices. And typically, when you issue requests in, in a traditional, more like normal service, let's say a REST service, or if these were REST, most people would have a, a timeout between the services. So in our instance, Mr. Happy User, we want to set a one second uh, SLA. So we must respond within one second. So what people do is, as I said, set a timeout here for one second. So in our distributed environment, we actually have to make two calls and then a call to a third party, which we actually pay per invocation. So every time we call their API, we have to pay them a little bit of, of money. So we want to make sure we, we do that the minimum amount of times that we have to, to service our Mr. Happy user. So what, what's the disadvantage of setting the timeout here? Say if these two services are now latent, or this service is latent, and Mr. Happy user in the GraphQL service is waiting one second, a timeout will disconnect that but behind the scenes, this service will actually still process uh, that request because it could be still in a, in a work queue, like a job queue, or if it's an HTTP server, it could be waiting in queue in the th for the thread to pick up that, to process that. And that means that also this service will call and then the third party library. So typically there's all these request timeouts everywhere, which basically narrow it down. And that's good. First level, you know, you're not actually letting things hang forever and you're responding to SLAs. But what that doesn't give you is when this actually times out, can you propagate that to the next service and say, don't process the request because we no longer need it? Well, that's what a, that's what a deadline is for. So when, when this user actually submits the request, on the first node, we actually generate a deadline. So that's a point in time in the future. So you can say, okay, it's one second from now. And when you send that deadline to the service, to your PC service, and when it accepts the request, you say, has the deadline exceeded? You can do this in code. So you can say, get the deadline if the context is exceeded or even get the context is canceled. And this way you can stop the propagation of a redundant call via deadline. So that's one massive benefit to stop the redundant kind of network traffic in your distributed environment. Now, one would say, uh, should we actually ignore the deadline and let it play in? Because for example, if we're going to third party, what we can do is actually let the data come back and then we can store it, say in a Redis cache here. And therefore when Mr. Happy user submits it in again, he could get the data from the cache and they'll have to call it here. So I mean, there's all different ups and downs for using deadlines. So you have to look into your architecture and see if you should use it or if you should not. But personally, I love it. And I hope you guys should check it out. And that was a nice tip. And I'll see you in the next video.